Hello everyone and welcome back. Just like the previous one, in this session we will discuss couple of more solved problems on number systems. So without any further ado, let's get to learning. Coming to the outcome of today's session, today at first we will observe another solved problem on minimum number of bits required to represent a decimal number to binary. Then we will observe a solved problem on performing addition on numbers of different number systems. Consider the first question. Find the minimum number of bits required to represent a 10 digit decimal number in binary. Now during the previous session, we discussed similar kind of problem. However, there we were given specific decimal value. This is a bit different scenario. Here, Instead of the specific decimal number, the number of digits been mentioned. So instead of solving the question right away, we will first try to understand the concept. Consider a m digit number of base a. Now for that number, the place values would be a raised to the power 0, a raised to the power 1, a squared, a cubed, till a raised to the power m minus 1. This is because the number is a m digit number. Now consider another n digit number of base b. Now the base being b, the place values would be b raised to the power 0, b raised to the power 1, b squared, b cubed, so on, b raised to the power n minus 1. Suppose this is the target number system. In other words, we would like to convert this number into a number of this number system. Now the maximum value represented by a m digit number of base a would be a raised to the power m minus 1, right? Similarly, the maximum value represented by a n digit number of base b would be b raised to the power n minus 1. Well, the explanation and the derivation of these have been discussed in the previous session. I would request the learners to kindly go through the session Number Systems Solve Problems Set 1 for better understanding. Now, if we convert this into its equivalent base B number, that particular value will be any value from 0 to B raised to the power n minus 1. Because we already know with an organization like this, we can represent any value from 0 to B raised to the power n minus 1. Therefore, we can state a raised to the power m minus 1 is either less than or equal to b raised to the power n minus 1. As because a raised to the power m minus 1 at most can be b raised to the power n minus 1. Therefore, we can state b raised to the power n is either greater than or equal to a raised to the power m. Since we are interested in the number of digits of the target number system that is n, therefore, if we apply log base b to both the sides, we will observe that the value of n will at least be log a raised to the power m base b. Now, according to the principles of logarithms, this exponent m will come down as a multiplicative prefix, correct? So, this is the formula that will help us solve this type of questions. Now let me show you how. Since we have already derived the formula, let's now try to solve this question. So we are to convert a decimal number to binary. Now it is provided in the question that the decimal number is of 10 digits. Now let's assume that the converted value in binary would have n bits. Now with 10 digits, the maximum decimal value that we can represent is 10 nines. That is, 1 less than 10 raised to the power 10. Similarly, the maximum value of a n bit binary would be 2 raised to the power n minus 1. Wouldn't it? Now remember, this is our target number system. Now we have just derived this formula, right? And I also claimed that this would help us solve this question. So let me illustrate which is which with respect to this problem. Observe carefully. In this problem, the value of a is 10. So let's replace that. Now the value of b in here is 2. 
Well, this is because the target number system is binary. Let's replace that too. Now coming to M, it's actually the number of digits of the decimal number, which has been provided as 10. So let's replace that as well. Now before moving ahead with the calculation, let's understand something. What are we trying to determine in here? The value of n, correct? Which can't be a fraction, because the number of bits will always be an integer value, right? So to avoid the possibility of having fractional value, we will apply ceiling to it. Now log 10 base 2 is 3.322. And multiplying it with 10, we get the value 33.22. Now, ceiling of 33.22 will give us the value 34. Therefore, the minimum number of bits needed to represent a 10-digit decimal in binary would be 34. So, instead of the specific value, if only the number of digits are provided, we still can determine the required number of digits in the target number system, can't we? Now, let's move on to the next problem. Observe this question. Consider the equation 1 1 base 2 plus 2 2 base 3 plus 3 3 base 4 plus 4 4 base 5 equals x y z in base 6. We are to find the values of x, y and z. Observe carefully, these are all the maximum two digit numbers of the respective base values. This is 1 1 of binary. This one is 2 2 of base 3. Clearly, for a base 3 number system, the symbol having the highest magnitude would be 2, wouldn't it? Similarly, this 3 3 of base 4 is the maximum 2 digit number of base 4. And the same can be stated for this 4 4 of base 5. The base being 5, the symbol with the greatest magnitude would naturally be 1 less than the base value that is 4. Now, interestingly enough, we are being asked to determine the resultant value in base 6. And from the formation of the question, it's pretty evident that the value would be a 3-digit value in base 6. So let's try to solve it. Now honestly, we can't perform addition on these numbers of different number systems. So what we will do? We will convert all of them to decimal first. Then we will perform the addition and thereafter, we will convert the decimal result into a number of base 6. So let's begin with the binary 1 1. Now, following the traditional approach, let's take the bits at first. Now, being a 2 bit binary number, the bits will have the place values 2 raised to the power 0 and 2 raised to the power 1. So 1 times 2 is 2. And since 2 raised to the power 0 is 1, so 1 times 1 is 1. Therefore, 1 1 in binary is 3 in decimal. Now, what about 2 2 of base 3? Well, the same drill. We will consider the digits first. Now, since it's a base 3 number, the respective place values would be 3 raised to the power 0 and 3 raised to the power 1. Now, 2 times 3 is 6. And since 3 raised to the power 0 is 1, therefore 2 times 1 is 2. And now, 6 plus 2 is 8. Therefore, 2 2 of base 3 is 8 in decimal. Let's consider the next one. 3 3 of base 4. So, we will take the digits 3 3. Now, being a number of base 4, the respective place values would be 4 raised to the power 0 and 4 raised to the power 1. Now, 3 times 4 is 12 and 3 times 1 because 4 raised to the power 0 is 1, so 3 times 1 is 3. So 3 3 base 4 in decimal is 15. Now coming to the last one, 4 4 base 5, well, same drill. So 4 times 5 is 20, and 4 times 1 is 4. Therefore, 4 4 in base 5 is 24 in decimal. Now we have the equivalent decimal values of all the numbers of different number systems. So let's add them. So 3 plus 8 is 11. 
and 11 plus 15 is 26, then 26 plus 24 is 50. So, this is the resultant value in decimal. Nonetheless, our target number system has the base 6. So, we need to convert 50 into a base 6 value. Basically, we will perform the integer factorization on 50 by the base value 6. Now, 6 eighths are 48 and 50 minus 48 is 2. Then, 8 by 6 will produce the quotient 1 along with the remainder 2. Thereafter, 1 by 6 will produce 0 as the quotient and 1 as the remainder. Now, recording the remainders in reverse, we will obtain the value in base 6 that is 1, 2, 2. So, the value of x is 1, y is 2 and z is also 2. So, in this session, we observed two more solved problems where the first one was a solved problem on minimum number of bits required to represent decimal number to binary. But instead of the specific decimal number, we dealt with the number of digits there. Then we observed the solved problem on performing addition on numbers of different number systems. Alright people, that will be all for this session. In the upcoming sessions, we will observe some more solved problems on number systems. So, I hope to see you in the next ones. Thank you all for watching.